Okay, YouTube and Vogons, this is a shout out to uh, my uh, other uh, Vogons members that was having trouble installing a, a bootable uh, drive on the Compaq LT Elite. And indeed, there are some issues and some difficulties with it. The biggest problem is that this Compaq LT Elite is a 486 processor and has limited support of hard drive sizes. In fact, the original hard drive that came with this was only 310 megabytes, and it was a 2.5 inch uh, IDE uh, laptop uh, drive uh, that was spinning very loudly. So let's go through the full gamut. I've switched out the, even though I have two models of the same, I have the 440CX and then the 450CX. Unfortunately, I don't have enough drive sleds. I only have one drive sled for the share between the two of them. So what I've done, let me move out the extra parts machine. And you'll see that the 450CX Compact LT just uses a standard uh, two-prong power jack. So you can use any of the other adapters. It does accept direct DC in, so if you can't find this or if your power supply dies, maybe there's a way to use a, a modern laptop. Just check the voltage. It's supposed to be for car adapters, I believe. So let's plug it in. When you plug it in, it automatically boots. So let's just show my current install. I apologize, it is uh, very bright and it's daytime. See if that helps by reducing some contrast and let's see if you can see that anyways there's a lot of ambient light i apologize for that. oh that that's the best i can do at this point and uh, uh i think we'll have to do <laughs> indeed you can even see reflections of my house i wonder anyways um so you can see i removed the cmos battery they all leak at this generation you gotta get them out there otherwise it could damage the motherboard luckily the cmos battery on this machine is a long cylinder that sits around here so it's and i haven't mine have not um leaked significantly yet but they weren't holding any charge so uh, the toposhiba machines definitely get them out they always fail and those green packs are going. So let's take a look at this. You can see it uh, well enough, I think. Okay, so we're just gonna hit F1. You can see it's booting. This is a compact flash card that I previously installed it on, but I'm gonna demonstrate to you how to do on a new compact flash as well. So there you go. It's actually pretty, if it's pretty quick. Okay, so that's this machine. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate now is that we are going to power it down. I want to demonstrate the drive sled. So on this machine on the bottom left is the drive bay. And you push it down, it pops out. To release the drive sled, there's a button on the side here. You press in. <laughs> It, it just pops back in and you pull out. Now, usually there's a little uh, bar that comes along with these drive sleds. I have intentionally, re it comes with an aluminum top plate and I've removed the top aluminum top plate and the sidebar. Um, the flex cable was getting a little bit brittle. You can see that there's a little crack here. And uh, I was worried that that won't work, but it still does work for now. This doesn't actually put more strain on rather than reinforcing it. But the previous owner had done a um, some form of splicing soldering, so hopefully that's enough. But anyways, I put my drive bay in here, which is a Saiba, S-Y-B-A, compact flash uh, um, to ID laptop ID adapter. I'm going to remove this, okay? Let's assume that this wasn't never existed. 
we're going to take another laptop that has some form of bootable system. And in this case, we're going to try installing just a simple DOS 6 boot. Now, luckily, this system, the battery still works. It's more modern Pentium machine. And I have a, you can boot off a floppy drive. You can boot off, a, in this case, a DOS 6 CD. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a fresh copy onto a uh, test bed. There you go. Let's grab one of my compact flash. It's important. This compact system only supports one gigabyte or under compact flash. And even then, it's pretty finicky or picky with it. So you have to be careful. I have put electrical tape on my compact flash card. So it just makes for easy insertion and removal. This one doesn't have it, so I'm going to add it on right now before I insert. Before I go on to that, I can see that the, uh, the ribbon cable has been torn and repaired by the previous owner. And my uh, capped on tape reinforcement wasn't holding. So I'm going to use some Bondic, which is a polymer or a glue type of thing. It's like super glue that cures of UV light. And I'm just going to... Bondic does not do is electrically neutral and you can build it up and I'm just going to use this to like hopefully bridge that gap. It may be hard to see, I'll see um, but these webcams don't focus very well. But what I've done is I've taken basically epoxy. That's what the Bondic is. I basically use a UV curable epoxy to reinforce that uh, gap that I was previously hoping that uh, just regular tape. This tray, because the cable is frail and friable, I am not planning to ever take the side of the device out. If I ever do, you have to be doubly sure that you're not going to tear this uh, uh, flex cable more. Okay, back to the original thing. So, as I was uh, alluding to, what I'm going to do is modify my compact flash card for easy removal from the Saiba um, compact flash or the IP adapter. All I'm going to do is on the opposite side of the pins, basically we're building a pullable handle. Otherwise, if you don't have that little handle, sometimes you have to get little pliers or tweezers to get that out. So, insert this in, clicks, we're going to boot up and we have to set specify DOS boot. This compact flash to ID adapter basically makes that compact flash look like the C drive and for all intents and purposes it is the C drive so we just booted into C drive already but what do I have in here I already have some amps let me just move them off first so the oh there's no way to move them off um that's okay this is a redundant uh basically it's a boot test floppy there so this is C drive you can see that it's on and I don't actually want C drive so what we're going to do we're going to reboot change the BIOS setting to boot from the US uh, from the CD-ROM and sorry you can't see that as well as I can the graphics is press escape press F1 move this right up here and what we're going to do is we're going to go to boot order. And instead of hard drive first, we're going to do CD-ROM first. Press N, save. So your compact flash card is actually acts like a um, hard drive. So you need to F disk it. So once we boot into the CD, we will be uh, <laughs> using up this. I'm afraid there's old RAM counts are slow. If all goes well, we should hear the CD drive move. And it did not. Mainly because I have not put in the DOS 6 CD in yet. 
So let's try that one last time. And you were asking, what do I use on my compact uh, LT Elite? It's just this one gigabyte eBay purchased card from ship from China. Oh, it says memorypartner.com. There you go. It's a memorypartner.com card. It's supposed to be SLC or industrial. It doesn't matter. I mean, but going back to the drive, you can see um, that we are now in. If you listen, you know, here we're in the CD-ROM, so it's counting as A drive. C drive is my 16 megabyte compact flash. But let's assume there's nothing on C drive. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to do F disk. We're going to delete, in this case, delete all partitions off my C drive. Volume label is 16 megabytes. Are you sure? Yes. So it's gone. So let's reboot. So if you just bought a compact flash card and you're just trying to install it on a separate machine, this is what you do. Boot into a bootable system using floppy or CD or, you know, you can even have a bootable um, uh, hard drive if you have a two drive bay desktop. Then you F disk. We're going to create a primary DOS partition. Yeah, I can see, you can still see it. And we're going to create it on the um, the only hard drive, the uh, Compact Flash 16 megabyte in this case. Uh, old DOS 6.2 requires you to reboot between F disking procedures. And then we're going to format C colon backslash. Let's see. And it's now formatting the compact flash card. And we're going to rename it 16 megabyte new, just so you know that it's not the previous one. We're going to take a quick peek. There you go, it's blank. We're going to go back into and format C colon. Oh, I don't even think it. we've already formatted, so we're going to sys C colon, because I forgot to use the uh, slash s there you go let's take a look at the c drive there you go we're, we're gonna i'm just gonna just copy everything onto c drives just so that we can test it when we boot into the compact system i guess i can't overwrite system files so we'll skip that next time and then we'll just bring everything else off the DOS CD. So, you know, when you're retro computing, uh, honestly, everything's always got some issues. Cracked um, plastics, it's got uh, bad CMOS batteries, uh, uh, some of the older stuff, the capacitors are going, you know. So you are pretty much stuck requiring the ability to debug and fix these things yourself. Now, that's turned off. This is now formatted and system, system installed C, uh, uh, IDE drive. Let's insert it into our compact drive sled. And let's reinstall. So I know that you've read about compact LTs requiring a special system partition. Well, that's all for setup and diagnostics. So we actually don't need it to boot. You just need a bootable uh, compact flash adapter. So let's take a look. It's booting now. 486s are slow. Disk error. And now, there you go. And I have now shown you that we have completely taken a, essentially a blank compact flashcard, installed DOS 6 on it, 
no special partition, no special things, and it's all here. So you can run, well, there's no, no other programs on it. Uh, this is what you need to do with the compact LTEs. The problem with the compact LTEs is that the floppy drives on this thing are using a belt driven, uh, it's a Citizen W1D, it uses a rubber belt that by this time has completely disintegrated. So you can't use the floppy drives for transfer. To get data on and off this, you can use a null modem cable. You can uh, use this compact flash adapter, and just continue pulling it out and swapping uh, data on using a US desk, uh, more modern USB compact flash reader for your desktop. Other thing you can do is that if you have a, both devices, you can use your desktop um, USB compact flash reader, write stuff on it, and you can use a PCM CIA adapter, shove it in there into the PCM CIA slot, and it will be detected if you're running Windows. Inside DOS, the PCM CIA uh, compact flash readers uh, require drivers, and they're somewhat hard to find. Uh, ATA E and A B is a uh, paid driver that uh, someone's written. Uh, if you want to support them, that's perfect. Otherwise, if you're like me and you're running Windows, um, Windows does have built-in PCM CIA drivers for the most part. Um, I believe that the Compact sold or provides Cardsoft, which is the software that reads PCM CIA as well, so you can download that. But that was not the point of this video, I apologize for the length of it. It's not uh, planned in any way, but this demonstrates how to get the uh, system booting using Compact Flash. Um, what have I tested on it? Four gigabyte definitely does not work. Memory Partner branded uh, one gigabyte seems to work and I have two of those so I can swap around uh, data. The smaller cards seem to work. 512, uh, I just demonstrated on a 16 megabyte. Um, so I think the limitation is about one megabyte, uh, sorry, one gigabyte cards or under, and then maybe configuration dependent. So I hope that helps. And this is a knowledge for posterity regarding Compact LTE Elite series. Now, the final note, if you are using a Compaq LT5000 series, I happen to have a 5300, uh, the 5000 series uses the exact same drive sled, which is great, so that uh, it's not as big a deal when I'm missing one if it's using the exact same drive sled. Um, but it does accept a 4 gigabyte. I've heard maybe even up to 8 gigabyte Compaq flash. I don't own any 8 gigabyte Compaq flash cards. Um, the other thing I did, I want to mention is that after I put this in here, I believe I might have, yes, I put some double-sided tape on the inside just to try and keep this uh, compact flash down because, like I said, the cable is so weak and already a little bit friable, I want to make sure that uh, we don't accidentally pull it out, and that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helps.